Good morning, good morning. Waiting for some folks to get on here. I just really feel impressed by the Lord to release an encouraging word. Hello, Michelle. Hello, darling. Hello, Sabrina. Good morning. Good morning. I haven't completely gotten my day uh, started. Obviously, I, you know, have been in my word. And Hello, Angela. Good morning. Good morning. And Michael. And Circuit. Hey, good morning. Y'all let me know your city and state. Let me know your country. Also, put a prayer request on here. Um, I'm not going to get into those right now. I'll either do that at the very end or uh, once we go off live, then I will go back and <clears throat> pray with you all. Pray over those requests. I love to do that, and I love for us to do that with each other. Hi, Jeremy. Hello, Sam. Russell. Oh, thank you, darling. Thank you, thank you. I'm about to go just... Enjoy the Lord and get my work day started. Oh, wow. How awesome, Sam. That is a praise report. How awesome. Well, good morning. Okay, so you're from, I hope I say this right, Marble Falls, Texas. I hope I said that right, Michelle. Dorothy, good morning, good morning. St. Pete, Florida, Wilmer. Blessings to y'all too. This word this morning is to those who feel like maybe you've been thrown away or that your promise is delayed or maybe you are feeling less than. Hello, Destiny and Sheila. Maybe you feel less than. Maybe you feel like you need that comeback. Maybe people wrote a bad name or a bad taint on you and you can't seem to shake it. You can't seem to shake it. Well, this is a time and a season <clears throat> that God is washing. His spirit is coming in in power and he is washing um, saints clean. He's washing names clean. Now, some people, it's due to nothing that you did. Others, it is actually due to something that you did. Um, and maybe uh, you haven't been able, even though you've repented, it's like people don't want to give you that second chance or that third chance. Or maybe it was like 10 times. Who knows, you know? But if there's true repentance, then this is for the truly repentant ones. And some of you may be going, because the enemy can get in people's minds and make them think, well, I don't know if I repented or not. I don't know. I'm just this. I'm just that. I'm telling you now, repentance is saying, God, I can't do this. I tried with my will to stop the sin, whatever it happened to be. <clears throat> and then, uh, obviously, that's when you just throw it up to the Lord, cast that burden on him and say, I can't do it in my own strength. I tried and failed. So unless you intervene, this can't change. But I want to repent. That's when God will show up. Now, some of us, it maybe wasn't that difficult, but I can say in my life, there were certain areas that were that difficult. I can remember 20 something years ago, I guess it, maybe it's been 30 years ago now, where I had been drinking, okay, uh, for four months and two weeks. After four months, God said, stop that, you're going to end up dead. And I saw visions and pictures of how it was going to be my demise. And I was like, oh my goodness. Well, for two weeks, I tried to stop. Sometimes I might make it till four o'clock in the afternoon. Sometimes, and I think one time I made it to eight. 8 o'clock in the evening. And what happened? I uh, picked the bottle back up. And I finally went to the Lord and I said, I can't stop this. I can't. You have to do something or I'm going to end up dead like you said. Okay? Well, he did intervene. He did. He gave me wisdom. He didn't do it for me. He gave me the strength and the wisdom, knowledge to know what to do. Drop those people. Drop that school. Get out of that city. Change your friends. Don't take their phone calls. Don't contact them again. Get away. Break away. Move somewhere new. And that's what I had to do, okay? <laughs> Amen. Be transparent. That's right. Because people need to learn from our good and our bad. Come on now. Um, there's awesome, wonderful things God has done in my life. But a lot of times, the awesome, wonderful things He's done, like when He healed me of the rheumatoid arthritis, was what? He showed me mine was unforgiveness. It was due to sin. 
okay? The things that had been done, they were real. They weren't just perceived issues. They were true and real. But he showed, had to give me the wisdom and knowledge to know where the sin was coming from and then how to release that and how to get healed. And he stepped in because he won't violate his own rules. But let's get back to the main theme of this video here, my friends, that God, we're going to be in Lamentations right now. I was reading in Lamentations. Let me put that back in Psalms so we can get back to that in a minute. Um, we're going to jump around from Lamentations to the Song of Solomon and then, was that Psalms? Yes, Psalms, right in, I think near 91, Psalms 91. But in Lamentations, we're told that the mercies of God are new. Um, how many of you feel like you have been afflicted? You can't seem to get out from underneath that affliction. You won't out from underneath that affliction. And you feel like, some of you may even feel like you've, you've got it right with God. You're right with God, but then people won't let you live it down. You know, sometimes that's because you need to disconnect from those people. If they won't let you live that down, if they won't let you have that mercy, if they won't let you, you know, extend grace and mercy to you like God does, you just need to disconnect from those people and find the people who will extend grace and mercy to you, who know the love of God and will show His love through them to you. Now, there are some people, um, you know, it can be leaders, it can just be uh, friends, it can be you know, enemies, whatever. It could have been a job situation that you were cast out of. Um, it could be uh, something in the marketplace. You know, did you work at Walmart and they throw you out uh, and you didn't do whatever you were accused of? Whatever it happens to be, the enemy had did this to have offense come. Offense, anger. Wanted you to develop unforgiveness in areas. There was a huge corporate assignment. It kind of hit America all at one time. Probably the world. But I know I saw it come after America. To cause people in the body of Christ to be offended. And it threw things out there like racism. It tried to get um, different cultures divided. It tried to divide people according to skin color. It tried to divide people according to uh, denominations. Um, hair color. You know, it didn't care. The enemy doesn't care. If he can just get that little right in there that's what he wants to do but listen to this if you feel like you've been abandoned and people won't let you live something down you know god loves you he's for you and he is not against you at any moment in time you repent he is willing to take you back i'm telling you now in lamentations let's uh go to chapter three and i want to start back up in here a verse uh 18 and it says i said this to the lord my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Remember my affliction in roaming, the wormwood and the gall. Now, this is something I've talked to people about. Oftentimes, we can feel this. You can feel that affliction. You feel like you've got all these holes in your soul and in your mind. I told someone one time my mind felt like Swiss cheese, like something had gone in there and put all these holes in it. It was just horrible. Well, that's that... Uh, I say there's like a worm, and oftentimes I'll tell people those are wormholes. The enemy has gone in and opened up doors and wormholes and areas of access or doorways, you know, whatever religious term you want to use, to go in and try to wreak havoc in the soul, the mind, will, and emotions, and the heart of believers, okay? That's what he wants to do. And obviously there was bitterness here when this was written. It says, my soul still remembers and sinks within me have we all felt that way the enemy wants us depressed but he's a liar okay but then this is what it says in verse 21 lamentations chapter 3 verse 21 this i recall to my mind we have to on purpose remember the things of the past that god has been good to us or remember his word or remember he's for us and not against us it says this i recall to my mind Therefore, I have hope. When we hope in God, hope in the Word, we have hope in Him, okay? He is removing the stench in year 2018, okay? In the Jewish year, even beginning in 5778, okay? He's removing His dunamis power of Holy Spirit is coming in like a flood and hitting every demonic structure in our lives. When we are willing to throw up our hands, He will wipe out that thing that tried to say it is the rock or that we are standing on solid ground, but it wasn't of God. He's willing to remove those um, false structures and put up the true identity of who we are in him. And then it says, the Lord's mercies. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. So whoever has lied to you and said that you are uh, 
deceived when you know you've got it right with God, then that's a lie. That's a lying voice. The enemy has used that person. Forgive them and move on. And that's the best advice I can give anybody is move on. Move on. Because sometimes God will change their heart to where they are loving and repentant towards you. And sometimes he doesn't because he's like that person isn't safe for you. I will not let their heart be turned to soft butter towards you. But I have remained, allowed it to remain a stone towards you like he did with Pharaoh so that, you know, you can go out out from Egypt, so to speak. So you can be out and free into your promised land, you know? Okay. So some of you have been in that wilderness situation and God says, you've crossed over. You're in your promised land. Wake up. You're not in the wilderness anymore. And it's like, he's coming up to you going, Hey, 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 hey wake up, wake up, look around you. You're in the promised land. Let me wipe that stench of yesterday off of you. Let me wipe that failure, you know, where you didn't succeed, where maybe you didn't uh, meet my expectations, but that doesn't mean I don't love you. I may have asked you to obey in such and such a season or to do such and such a thing and you didn't do it, but this is a new season and a new life and a new time. And I am allowing you now to have that grace and that mercy. I'm extending that to you. Throw off that past, throw it off and let it go. Let it go. Let it die. Let it be a dead thing in your life. I have better for you. I have new for you. I'm calling you out of that. Lift up your countenance and your face towards me. Walk in arenas with your head lifted high and for some of you got it and taking you out from among those who may have um, said that you were worthless or that God couldn't hear your prayers. Or maybe they said you weren't among the beloved. You weren't among the saved people of God. Maybe they didn't understand, but God isn't removing you from some of those situations. Why? He has set a table for you in front of, in the presence of your enemies. He's letting them see you prosper financially, prosper in your soul, prosper in your ministries, prosper in the uh, your job, your things that you do on a daily basis. God wants the enemy to see that because God likes to do it this way because he is God and he did it all. He gets all the glory and he can go, whoop, that's my baby. Whoop, whoop, look at that one. <laughs> You said she couldn't make it. Oh, but look at her go. Or, oh, you said he couldn't do it. But, oh, look at what he did through me. He trusted in me. And there it is. There it is. Yep. Counted that one out. They not out. Hey, they're in for the long haul. That is what it is. I want to encourage you. Just, but let go of the past. Let it go. Who Shake it off of you. If you need to stand up wherever you are and begin to shake all over your body and get the stench, get it off and ask God, say, Holy Spirit, blow on me. Blow the stench away. I want the rose of Sharon to blow fresh on me. I need frankincense anointed on me. I need myrrh for the pain. I need your fragrance, oh God, from... I need the whale on the inside of me to rise up in the name of Jesus. Now, if you're not saved, you can get saved. You can ask Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord. Because you can't have these promises I'm talking about if you're not saved. If you're not a child of God, hey, the true one and living God, then these promises aren't for you. They're free. But you've got to say, I choose you, God. You know, you're walking by through the courthouse and you look and somebody says, you're fixing to go up to the window and pay your ticket. But see, the ticket price is so huge, you can't pay it. And so they've got a thing called jail, and it's called hell, and we don't want to go there. But you look over on the table, and you see there's a ticket. It looks like a bill, a receipt, and you go, what is that? Did somebody pay my bill? Well, if you want to reach out and take Jesus, you just reach out, and you get your receipt paper where he paid your ticket. You walk up to the counter when it says, hey, Pay your bill, and you go, paid in full, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, blood of Jesus. There you go. Paid in full. Take the payment. There's the receipt. And hello, you set free, and all the promises are for you. And they're not for you in glory land when you die and get to heaven. You were getting stuff then, too. But God says, have you given up family? Have you given up relatives, mothers, brothers, sisters? Have you given up houses and children and things like that? Have you given up your finances? Were you rejected? Were you almost stoned to death or turned away? Well, guess what? You're getting a hundredfold in this age, in this life right now. But you got to believe it. That's what the Word of God says in the New Testament. Look it up. Put in Google, Bible, and then put in some of those keywords that I just mentioned. I apologize for not having that scripture right before me. And some of y'all already know what it is. Please put that on here because I know some of my friends want to see that. Well, let's move on over here to the Song of Solomon. This is just how much he loves us. 
You know what? It says, I am my beloved's and his desire is for me. God has a desire for you. And it is, um, you know how a man and a woman get to ma uh, together. They get married and you desire one another sexually. Okay. That's a strong desire, strong desire, right? Okay, there's nothing ungodly about that. You're married. It's the marriage bed. Well, when we take Jesus as our Savior, it's like we're married to the Lord, okay? We're supposed to be uh, having a desire for Him. And I'm not saying it's a sexual desire, okay? It's a different. But we're supposed to hunger and thirst after Him. Just like if the deer, you know, it says the deer pants for the water. We're to hunger and thirst after Him. We're to have that same desire for Him because He has that desire for us. That when you're an intercessor, some of you intercessors know, you'll pray for somebody and they could have done some really heinous, horrible things and yet the love of God that is poured out towards that person, they might not even be saved. And you're like, oh, there's, I feel such love for this person. I just love them. Well, you know what? You're feeling God's love for that person. That's what that is. Okay, so He has that strong, strong desire for us. He loves us. Well, let's move on over here to the book of Psalms. And I was looking at Psalms. And you know, David, he was, um, he had some things that occurred in his life. And some of them weren't so good, all right? Some of them weren't so good. But it says right here, because, and this is talking about God, what God has done. Because he has set his love upon me. And now this is, um, pardon, this is David. Pardon. Let me get this right. God is speaking in this verse right here. Because he, and that's David, or any other person, that's me and you. Because we have set our love upon God. Because God in this verse, the me is capitalized. That's God. Therefore, I will deliver him. If you feel like you are in a pit and you can't get up and out of the pit, you quote this in Psalm chapter 91, verse 14. And you quote this promise. It says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore, I will deliver him. And you change that to say, because I have set my love upon the Lord God Almighty, upon Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Therefore, you, God, have promised to deliver me. That's how you pray scripture back to God and it will not return void. That means it will do everything that God has intended for it to accomplish. The word of God is like a hammer. It will go into your situations and it will break the enemy off your life and destroy the enemy from off of you. It will break demonic patterns and cycles. If you see certain cycles and certain seasons and certain times of things happen in your year, in your life, um, and you know every three years this happens or every year around this date that happens. I'm telling you now, the word of God breaks those demonic cycles. Have people pray for you. It's not wrong. If someone gets mad because you ask them to pray for you, that's their issue and that problem. I have seen this sometimes even among prophets where they will rebuke someone harshly because they've asked them for a word. If that person is immature and they have come up to you and asked you for a word, you don't need to rebuke them unless God Almighty has said to rebuke them. If you have an issue with that, you need to take it to the Lord and tell him why these people coming up to me like that. Maybe it's because you've made yourself available. Okay? But you don't need to rebuke those who don't know any better. It's to love them and say, I'm not Holy Spirit for you. Let me help you find God's voice for your own self. Sometimes people do need that. Okay? But God is a jealous God. And he doesn't want anyone else being someone else's Holy Spirit. That I can tell you right now. He hand feeds many. Some people he'll allow to be under others and to be fed. And then some people he has chosen for a reason to be hand fed by him. They are in a position where they dish out word, where they dish out knowledge and wisdom and instruction and counsel from God to people. And he himself hand feeds them. And he doesn't like it if there's a middleman. Okay, he doesn't want anybody or anything coming between him and whoever that person is. Now, I was recently had a vision where I saw, where I saw a room filled with 25 to 35 year old males. And I'm sure there were women in there. I didn't see them, but I just felt like I knew there were men, women in there too somewhere. Okay, but these men were being hand fed by God. They had their own ministries, their own houses. They had their own groups. These are people we would consider great in the faith. They're hand-fed by God, okay? That doesn't mean they still cannot receive instruction from other people, but their main source of counsel and instruction is from the Lord. You know, we all need to mature to where we get to that point because we don't need to remain a baby Christian all the time. But I want to get back to the main point of this video. I felt like God said there are so many people out there right now. They have been told by people 
that they are not Christians or they have been told Jesus doesn't love them or Jesus hates them. It doesn't matter what sin you have done. It doesn't matter what you have committed. If you have had an abortion, that is murder. You've murdered someone. You took someone's life, okay? That doesn't mean you're outside of God's grace. It doesn't mean he doesn't love you. or And it also doesn't mean he doesn't care about you. Because as soon as you say, I don't intend on doing that again. God help me. Uh, heal me. Deliver me from that. Bam. You confess it. You forgive yourself. You have to say, I forgive myself for, and then you name it. You name what you did at the most horrible extent of what it is called. Um, don't sugarcoat it. <sighs> and that's what you'll feel when that happens. That's what you'll feel. You will get a release and you'll feel the difference. You'll feel the shift on the inside of you. And I, I want to tell some folk on here, get yourself up and out of the religious house. The religious houses, those that don't have the spirit of God in them, that are dead churches that have stagnated out, been choked out by the uh, spirit, not by the, well, the spirit of religion, but not obviously by Holy Spirit. Get out of those places. They're operating in a form of witchcraft, okay? But uh, if God, now there are some people who are, may be in a place that seems like that. It doesn't mean that's what it is. You may be assigned there to bring life to that house, but you better know your assignment. If God didn't assign you into a house, telling you to um, speak forth life into it when it isn't even a part and it's been cut off and it's out here somewhere and he never intended it to be, you know, you shouldn't be there, okay? But obviously, if, if you are assigned to a place that looks like it has died or dying, but God wants you to bring life into it, the Holy Spirit that's in you can flow out and permeate and affect people, then by any, you know, by all means, stay and do what you are supposed to do. Um, so we all have to know our assignment. We need that relationship with God. So if you feel, like I said, this is for those who feel and emotions lie. I want to tell you that. You feel rejected, cast out, um, alone. Then I speak right now, health, wholeness, and healing. We all come into agreement that you are not alone. God is bringing to you relationships that will be lifetime relationships, that will be seasonal relationships, that will propel you through the doors of destiny in your life. They will come around you and help you. But I also want to tell you this. Many times people who come around you, help you, and pull you out of the pit are seasonal people. Once you get healed or start getting healed, they're okay with you being damaged and them healing you, working on you with the Lord. But once you're strong and mature, many of them won't move over and let you reign and rule with them. You got to go somewhere else, and that's not a bad thing, okay? God used them. Those are called seasonal people. God used them in your life to build you up and bring you back to where you needed to be. But once their job is over, let it be done. Because this is what God does. Favor is on your life. Favor is on your life for the right connections. Don't hammer and try to get a connection to be interlocked together that God has caused favor to be. Because you can try your best to try to, and it's not going to happen. Okay? But when there's favor involved, okay, when there's favor involved, it's like a meshing. Okay? Well, the enemy has tried to destroy some of the lifetime relationships that God has ordained. But I'm telling you now, God can bring those even back to life. And that, my friends, I believe is the end of this video. Um, go ahead and throw some friend, uh, not friend requests, but some praise, uh, prayer requests on here. And praise reports. I want to hear your praise reports. Hello, Pastor Annette and... Mr. Ivan and Paul, Kirk, Michelle, Ivan. Oh, soul ties. Well, you know, we're supposed to have positive, good, healthy soul ties. Obviously, we were supposed to have those from our mother and father, right? Annette. Well, we're saying that the Lord has lifted your countenance in your face. Walk as that reigning and ruling one. And I know that you do. Hey there, Amelia. Hello, darling. Russell, Patty, and James, Evangelist James. Thank you. Well, we just praise the Lord. Because I tell people, any wisdom that seems to come out of my mouth, any good thing that I do, it has to all be Him. It truly does. Adrian, Daniels, Sarah. 
Amen. We ask right now in Daniel's life for the Lord to confirm those doors. We speak right now for alcoholism to go out of your ex-husband's life right now in the name of Jesus. That he be offended no more. Okay, Patty. Will we come into agreement with anything that is um, doesn't contradict God's word? That he give you the requests and the desires of your heart in Jesus' name. Hello, Travis and Sabrina. Okay, I'll go back and look at some of these prayer requests. Okay, well, Sheila, we just speak life into Isaac right now. We also decree and declare he's not mentally challenged. Anytime you write that in the future, say he was and put was in big capital letters with a parenthesis around it. So, And people will pick up on that and go, what? Oh, oh, okay. Um, we're going to say he was. He's not mentally challenged. And I want you to walk around decreeing and declaring that. My son is not mentally challenged. There's nothing wrong with him. There's nothing wrong with his mind. And maybe you already do that. Wilmer, we just dispatch angels to uh, your location right now. We uh, put them between you and the enemy. Wow. Well, then, what a privilege. May that men's conference that you speak on for those ages 15 and up this Friday and Saturday go well and God be glorified. And everyone who needs delivered, get delivered in the name of Jesus. Dorothy, we command that cloud to back up in the name of Jesus. Hey, we're declaring and decreeing. See, this is the time where the demonic cloud is being blown away by the Spirit of the Lord, the dunamis power of God, and the cloud of you know, like the one that the was around the Israelites, that cloud, that God cloud, Holy Spirit cloud, is replacing, you know, the demonic cloud. So here comes the glory cloud. May it hit you now in the name of Jesus, Dorothy. All of gladness, the joy. Hmm. Amen. Thank you, Julie, for doing that. She spoke out the names of those who had offended her, who had hurt her. And she forgave them. Woo, Sheila. Amen. We agree with you. You're coming off that medication, whatever it is. Make sure God said to do it. Amen. Um, June, you're not going to depart from the word in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Okay. For your business. May it prosper, Julie. Royce, we speak right now. Breakthrough for your friend. We are agreeing in the name of Jesus. Mm, wow. Ivan, Mr. Ivan, that's amazing. Okay, wow. Michelle, we just say that your family is prosperous in Jesus. Ah, uh, Amen, Patricia. God wants you to lean on him, and we decree and declare your back is healed and whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Well, let's decree and declare, Bobby Joe, that that funk gets off of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Deeper relationships. Amen. Your husband be changed and transformed also. We decree and declare y'all are a power team for the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We, uh, Marion, you can go back and watch it when we uh, get this posted shortly. And I gotta jump off here. I have to go to work. So, love you guys. Mwah. See ya.